Welcome back to our class, everyone. Today we'll be making Inez Avedris inspired artwork. Inez Avedris is a Mexican American artist from Chihuahua, Mexico. I believe she lives now in Austin, Texas. She specializes in creating beautiful, bright, colorful landscapes that are outlined with gold, which is why we use the gold sharpie to outline our landscapes. We're going to be making analogous color schemes. An analogous color scheme is a color, a group of two to four colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So for instance, I went ahead and rolled them down. We have blue green, which are next to each other, blue, blue violet, red violet, and I'm also going to be doing a little bit of red. So not a lot, just a little bit. So if you look on the color wheel, red is next to those colors. To get started, we're going to be doing watercolor. And Nezer Vigors usually uses acrylic or oil paint. For this, for this project, we'll be using watercolor. I went ahead and I outlined a couple parts with the Sharpie and then went in and added some detail using the crayons. The reason I did this is because crayons are wax resistant. What that means is when I paint over this, it will come right through. So watch carefully. So we just get plain on blue. A little bit, I want to wake it up, and I'm going to paint right over that. You'll notice how the green pops through. That's still a little bit dark, so I'm going to go in now and use wet on wet and kind of just dab it on to give it that watery texture. You do not need to use a lot of paint. Less is more in, in the case of watercolor. I can't tell you how many times using watercolor paint, I have used way too much paint and way too much water, and it messed up my paper. So when you're using watercolor, tr just try to be very minimal with how much water you use. You do not need a lot. I don't like that, but I want to make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to get a little bit purple and do dab, dab, dab. What I'm doing here is making blue violet. You can mix your paint as you go on your paper or you can mix it in the empty tray right here. So if I wanted to make blue violet, I would get some blue, put it right here, mix some purple, and there I have my blue violet. So go ahead and paint that over here. So here we have our work in progress. I've been using wet on wet and wax resistant crayons. You can see how the green here is popping out. What I realized is when you use darker colors like blue, it doesn't really show up as easy through watercolor. So your best bet is to use the really bright colors for your outlines for the, for the crayons and then go over it with the paint. What I'm gonna be doing right now is called wet on wet. I'll be mixing my colors on my paper. You can mix your colors also here in the tray but I find that it has a better effect once you mix it on your paper. So this is, I'm gonna be mixing red violet. Red violet is also a tertiary color. Tertiary colors are colors when you mix a primary and a secondary together. So I'll be mixing primary and also secondary to make red violet. So you're starting off with a little bit of red right here like so just like that red like that then i'm going to go in and get my purple and mix it right on top and that makes me red violet red violet is a tertiary color because when you mix a primary and a secondary color it makes a tertiary color okay 
Let's try again. This is called Wet on Wet. Once your painting dries and you want to go back and texture, you can. Something I'm going to be doing. I'm going to let the watercolor dry. Once I'm done with my mountain, I'm going to go back with maybe some brown markers or crayons and add that texture of the mountain in. So the color thing I'm using right now is called analogous because analogous colors are next to each other on the color wheel. It's a group of two to five colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. There's red. We get some purple and make it red violet. For my sky, I'm also going to be doing red violet, but a lighter version of that. I'm going to get my red, put some here, put some red right there. Make it almost pink, get some purple, a very light red violet, and I'm going to paint my sky that color right there. Nice and light. That should be the lightest part in my sky. Now I'm going to go in and do maybe some blue. That's way too dark. That's okay. All I got to do is add some water to my brush and paint over that. I'm painting over my cloud, but that's okay. I can go over a second layer once it dries. All right, I think I'm finished. I use analogous colors once again. Analogous means it's a group of two to four colors, sometimes five, that are next to each other on the color wheel, also known as cool and warm colors. On your artist statement, when you turn this in, Remember, think about how can you improve? What will you change about the painting you created and do it better? In my case, I don't like my sun. If I did this again, I will do the sun with crayons or color pencils instead of watercolor. It just looks really muddy and ugly to me. I might do the clouds with color pencils also, but the rest I'm kind of happy with. I like the rocks, I like the grass, but the sun and the sky, kind of need some help. So when you're doing your artist statement, keep that in mind when you're trying it in. Ask yourself, how can you improve? What can you change about your painting that you did that you can do better next time? When you're ready to clean up, you're going to need one of these little wipes. Wipe down your table. I made a huge mess. Look at that. Huge mess. That's what happens. It's watercolor. That's why we have these wipes. You wipe it down. And then you clean your palette just like so. Clean it up. That way, when the next person comes, it'll be all ready for them to work. Wash your brush. That's why we have these sponges here. Swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. Flick, swish, and flick. And dab it. You can try it out on your hand to see if it's clean. Look, nothing's coming out, so that means it is clean. Okay. Put your brush back inside. Ooh, this brush is dirty. There you go. Put this brush back inside there. Close it and put it back where you found it. Swish and flick. Put it back and close it. And you're all set. I hope you guys have fun doing your Inez Amidra's landscapes.